Hello everybody, I'm the Real Source, and today I'm gonna teach you how to get sound in your Ready or Not maps. So for this you'll need to download FMOD Studio 2.02.03, uh, which is this version, not the latest version. You download this and you download FMOD for Unreal. Then you'll need to find your map folder which in this case is my fun map you'll need to go into plugins or make a map that is called or make a folder that's called plugins if you don't have it and you place the fmod studio for unreal in there it's just like the uh, rar file just just drag it in here and it will have all of these then afterwards you'll need to start up your project and you'll need to go into plugins and you'll need to look for fmod and check that it's enabled. If it's not just enabled, it can restart it. Then you'll normally see underneath the project settings, you'll probably find FMOD underneath the plugins at the side here. FMOD Studio. And if this one says that your settings are not valid, it'll be a little button on the side there that says fix. So that's okay. And just leave everything as it is. And then you should be able to see under help validate fmod. Just gonna validate really quick. And just press yes. So this uh, says that there are no uh, fmod directory existing here. And it's finished validation, which shouldn't, shouldn't really matter. But in the, uh, in the bare bones project, there is a folder called fmod. It'll contain all of the events and things like this that you need. These are just placeholders, they don't contain any audio itself. So if you were to replace this uh, with the files in game, they'll just show up empty and it's not gonna play anything. But you'll need to use this to reference the sounds are in game. So basically, what you're gonna use is like any of these events will, will do really. Just don't use the reverb because they're. Yeah, it will then work. <laughs> so, usually I will be working with the event stuff, and you could use like uh, for the levels. Like, I made one here myself. These don't really work right now. Uh, you could choose, take something like Elevator Ping, maybe, and use that. So, for now, I'm just going to show you how, how I get this one to work, which is so in game. This is basically just a box that detects if you walk into it, and it's gonna play a sound there. And it's also gonna turn on light, but you don't really need to worry about that. So I have T in my BP. It doesn't really matter where you have it, really. I just have it here for convenience, and I just call it motion sensor. And this is really simple. We'll have a, a begin overlap event for the box. It will check if the the thing that overlaps it is a character in which the game, the player character you played as in the game is actually inheriting from this character. So if everything goes okay, then the next step will be executed. So after that, I just do something for the light, which is not really important. But then I will have a FMOD audio component inside of here that is going to start to play and I'll have a re-trigger delay here before it can fire again. And after that I'll stop it. You don't even really need to stop it because it's gonna auto-stop when it's finished, but... Right now I just have to stop because it's more convenient and saves resources. But to add one of these, it's really simple. We can take this from scratch so I don't need to mess up this thing. So here we'll need to right-click, create new blueprint plus, there's also an actor. And just name it VP underscore audio volume, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Now get into here, this is gonna be blank. You'll need to add a one component that is called box collision. And it's basically gonna be a hit box, it doesn't really matter what you call it really. And you'll need to add another component, which is gonna be called FMOD audio. 
so this is gonna play FMOD Studio event, so that's why I needed to install FMOD. So I'm gonna call this the uh, audio player, something like that. And here is why we needed the events. We need to tie an event inside of there that it's gonna play. And it's gonna be in the center of this thing. And if you want to like adjust the size of it, you can adjust the scale, but I usually just make a simple construction script. We're just gonna execute at the start of when you um, place it in the level, really. Not not when it gets into the game, but when it actually is in your editor. I'm just gonna add a few variables that I'm gonna call X. I'm gonna click this little button there and change this to float. Click the little eye icon so you can actually edit it from the editor. And I'm gonna uh, press Control W to duplicate this one. I'm just gonna call it X, Y, and Z. This is basically gonna be the scale of all of this. Uh, so the default scale just can put something like 50, just so you can see it in game. And at the start here, you're gonna drag in the box, click Hold Control, and it's gonna make this little floating pill here. Then I'm gonna go Set Box Extent. I'm gonna just gonna drag this one into here. I'm gonna right click this and split the struct pin. And basically you can drag in all of these. Then you'll also need to create a new variable which can be called sound. It doesn't really matter what you call it, just make sure I kind of stick and make this a fmod event. Uh, which is this thing, the one with this thing. I make it the object reference. Like that. Just gonna compile. Uh, you could make uh, some sort of hammer or something being the uh, the default in case you forget to add anything just so you know play and this should be okay now I really want to visualize how far out this can play because that is really okay we're just gonna add another uh, spherical collision and call this um, max range or something like that and instead of this thing what I can do is that I could is that I could make this an editor only object so it's not gonna be in game. I'm just gonna compile this and I'm just gonna also go into go into the navigation and put this to nav area null because it's not gonna be anything that you can na navigate around. The box here though is kinda important as the um, uh, the box will kind of dictate where you could hear it is in, or where it's going to trigger from. I'm just going to make this like a, uh, like a yellow color or something like that. And just make this also an area null. And on a collision, this is the most important one. You want to tick this simulation, generate hips events. You want to make it a custom collision preset. Collision enabled. And we're basically going to use um, everything going to be ignored except pawn and for dynamic. That means like your mesh and your character's mesh can trigger this and your pawn. It should be re just really the pawn really uh, that can activate this thing. And make sure it's overlap and not blocked or else you can't do anything inside of this and also untick this one can add, ever uh, affect navigation you don't want to affect any navigation or anything so just like this um, and if you want to play for everybody in your, in your stuff it's gonna you're gonna require the component replicates so that plays for everybody on your in your game whatever so I'm just gonna put this to 50, 50, 50, who cares? One against two, this is just like for convenience sake. They're basically they're gonna look like this. And now, as you can see, uh, this little 
this little sphere here, we also want to see the maximum range of this thing. We're going to go into the construction script right here. And I'm going to find the audio player. I'm going to drag it in here, hold control. And I'm going to go in. Uh, I'm going to go in attenuation. I'm going to go set attenuation details. And I'm basically going to make the attenuation details here. And if you want to override the attenuation, that's uh, that's cool. We can make a variable here that's going to call uh, at override. Doesn't really, don't really need anything else. Make the boolean. And then we're just going to duplicate x and call this man distance and max distance. And this one is uh, very important as well. We're going to drag this one in here into the minimum distance. You can drag this one into here, maximum distance, and add the right in here so that you control it from the side of your screen when you're having to need it and stuff. So minimum distance, usually this is being 0 or 1, doesn't really matter. Maximum distance, let's set it to something like 500 for example. And let's uh, let's override the attenuation for now because that's going to make this one um, more, what do you call it? It, it should be uh, higher priority really. I'm just going to make this a little bit more neat like that. Just easier to see. Now at the start of this, you want to do the same for for the sphere as it's done with the box here to just set how big it is. I'm gonna take the max range and drag it out here and set sphere radius, which is the same as the box extent, only that in sphere radius you have the max distance. I'm basically gonna drag this one in here, like this, and like so. And that's basically going to show you how far out your thing is going to be viewed. So right right now, it's not going to go. You're not going to be, be able to activate it from real far away, but you can hear it from much farther away than where you can activate it from. Right now, this is cool and all, but how do you actually make it play sound? And this is when we need to have a look at the. Um, collision with this box here. So of course you have set up all of this, that just makes it uh, being able to detect uh, when a pawn or basically a character moves into this thing. And for it to activate you need to right click this box and go to add event, add on component begin overlap. And from here you want to do um, the exact same thing that we did the other time. I'm gonna cast this to character as the player character inherits from the UFR character. And once if it fails, of course, nothing will happen because, like, let's say it's like a gun, this, then this one is not gonna be a character, it's gonna fail and it will do something else. We don't want to play it with just a gun in there. Right. So if it if it's a character, you probably want to play sound, right? So you're gonna get the sound, and I'm gonna go and uh, play. You could either uh, play the event 2D. So this is basically uh, here we can play the event at the location. Right here we can play the event 2D. That's basically like for menu or for like uh, for like world contact maybe uh, I don't know. So from here you can have like uh, some kind of ambient, for example. You could have net city, farm, whatever. I'm just gonna choose something like a hum, so you can actually hear it. Let's say club bar hum. Probably this would be okay. Just drag the hum out here. But instead of having an event like this and set it for everyone, this is why you use the sound. So I'm just gonna drag, drag the sound in here. And yeah, sorry, the audio player is what you need to get in into the world context object, as this is the one that actually plays this. The audio player being this little guy in there. So yeah. 
sound, all of that should be good. And then you get the uh, structure or whatever. And if it's autoplay or not, uh, you can decide if you need another instance to to trigger the playing of this. But I'm for this now. You just have this to play whenever you touch the uh, the box of this thing. So that's really that simple. It's really just uh, a little bit more like this. And if you want this to be able to see this in the world when you drag it out, you just do something simple as adding a billboard. And inside of this sprite, you can just type, type an audio or sorry, sound, I think it is. So here I get an ending context. You can see here you have like something like this. I mean, sound symbols, for example, like this. So you can actually differentiate between some of the sounds. Should be good. This is just from the engine, and it will, you know, could be able to use that. So, that's an engine content. Should be able to use that right from the get go. But yeah. Right now, it's done this. You can press save, compile, whatever. And you'll find the audio volume and just drag it out like this. So here we see it. I already have a, uh, another one here. You can kind of place this one out to the side here, something like this. And this is where it's gonna play too. Just bear in mind that. So the the box that we can trigger it with will need to be will need to be a little bit you know bigger. We could add this to be like, let's say 200 by 200, like that. And let's change, maybe we can change it, or we could have like club entrance, something like that. Club hookah, club music speakers. Let's add something like this. Should be able to hear it from far away or not. Let's set it from like 800 away. So you can actually hear it from like out, outside here. Yeah, should be good. Okay, we, then we can just like save all of this, you can build a map, whatever, and we can try it out in game. Now, before you cook this, it's really important that you delete everything that you have in the FMOD that is not custom. For example, levels. If I had custom sounds in this thing, custom uh, banks, I would, I would need to keep that, of course. But for everything else right now, if you're only using game sounds, just delete this right before you cook, so that you could just drag the uh, folder right onto your packer, and that should be it. So already from the start you can hear that the hum that I already have in my map is working, it's real nice. So yeah, I have a bunch of things just floating around here, but yeah, you'll be able to hear this. Hands up, now. Get away from me. So that, that is just from the start. I also have something here, which is basically just an alarm. That is supposed to happen. Then we have over here as well. to play every time someone steps into it. So yeah, now it's, it's gonna play forever. So yeah, obviously we'll not need to make this disappear. So yeah, you get you get a point. 